nice having you right here. Today, we're going to be creating this very dashboard on your screen. It's very simple to be created using Microsoft Excel. So if you have been using Excel before, this particular dashboard is a little bit you know, different from what you had been creating. You might need to watch it. So let us look at what dashboard has right here. So on the dashboard, you can decide to choose absolute value or you choose percentage and your chart would definitely be updated accordingly, right? At this particular top right here, we're trying to help the business to track KPIs like quantity sold, you know, cost of goods sold, revenue, profit, and profit margin in percentage. On this particular part, we're trying to look at profitability based on brand, location, customer, you know, top salesperson, and as well based on age group. On this particular chart, what we're trying to actually, you know, look at is the distribution of revenue by price category. And over here, we're trying to look at distribution of revenue by, you know, age group. On this particular part, we're trying to look at distribution of revenue by payment method. And over here, we're trying to look at distribution of revenue by location, which is something very, very important to the business. So the next thing you have to look at is that whenever I actually select a particular part of this particular slicer, it highlights a point in this particular chart for me. And it happens right on this particular chart and on this chart as well, which is something very simple to be created. And my favorite part is this particular part where you can switch between absolute and percentage and your chart opposite accordingly. So the very first thing you have to do right now before we start creating is to make sure you download the resources file and open it up, then there is a PDF in it. Go ahead and open the PDF on dashboard one. Take a look at the business requirements or the problem you are going to solve in this particular class before you start following me step by step. So I believe this will definitely help you. All you have to do is to watch to the end and actually learn something and apply it to your own personal projects. So let's get started. Download the resources and open the PDF. You're going to see dashboard one and as well, you're going to see dashboard two. Then read through the requirements to see what it is that we're about to get into. The next thing is for you to open the, the data set and you're going to find something like this. You have the raw data and you have product. So if I come over here now, I can expand this by clicking over here, then double click here and it will actually spread it out for me. The next thing I'm going to do is just to make sure I do Ctrl T to actually convert this into a table or still I can go over to the top ribbon here and click on insert. Then I click on table. It would do the same thing for me. Make sure you have this particular my table has headers, you know, checked and click on OK. Now you have this. In case you don't like this view, the next thing you have to do is to go to the top ribbon again. Make sure you click on table design and over here you can see lots of designs that you can actually use. Right. I love this particular one that says none. I don't want any design for it. I just want something as plain as this. Okay. The first thing you have to do again after all is just for you to make sure you look at every single column to see if they have the right data types. As you can see, this is my transaction date and here is my buyer's date of birth. They are not on the right you know, format. So what I need to do now is just do some kind of highlights here. Hold your control key to highlight this one as well then do control one and come over to where you have this particular date right in then choose this particular format click on ok so now we have the date format to be right okay the next thing again is if you look at it we have just you know uh quantity here and if we come over here, you have the cost of goods, the, the cost and as well the unit price. So how do we get this away from here? So I will actually advise you to some kind of highlight this particular part, then go over to the top ribbon again and click on formulas, then click on create from selection. What are we trying to do? We are trying to create a name range for every single column. It will be very easy for we to actually look up this particular table without coming here. So click on it, then deselect this one and choose the top row, then click on OK. So what happens if I'm on this particular part here and I click on this particular part and I select cost, it automatically jumps me here and highlights this particular column for me. I believe you understand all this. 
Okay. Uh, right away, we want to get this particular column into there, this one as well, and this one. We are doing all of this without coming over here. All you have to remember is the headers here to actually retrieve the values you have inside every single columns. Let us quickly click over here now, and we are here. So because we have a table, we can just quickly say um, brand names or product name, whatever. Okay, how do we get it? You can use XLOOKUP in here with your equals X and you choose XLOOKUP. So the XLOOKUP is looking for the lookup value. So what are we looking for? So we're looking for something that has to do with this. So lookup array is where can we find exactly this particular code? Where can we find it? So don't forget, I actually showed you a particular table, which is the product table. And this particular product table has some columns in it. So if I type in products now, you can see over here, I have the product code right here. So all I have to do is to hit my tab key to bring it in. So with comma again, it shows me return array. What do I want to return? I want to return this. Uh, yes, this very column. And uh, if I put a comma again, it will be asking me if it is not found, what do you want to return? You can leave this to be the default one without giving it anything. So you close and you hit your enter key. Automatically, you can see I have everything right here. So if we go back right now, what we have done is to actually use this to map this very one and retrieve it. So the same thing you're going to do to this and as well this one without coming into this particular table. So make sure you come over here and type in cost. So for your cost now, you can do your equals. What can we use to retrieve this particular cost is going to be X lookup. So with the X lookup now, we are going to use the uh, product ID here to get that. And quickly, because it's an X lookup, where can we find it? We go under product, then we scroll down. So how do you know which one among them it is? Because we have product here, that is of uh, uppercase, which is this very one, and we have this one. This one that has FX with a circle means it's a function, or sorry, it's a formula inside Microsoft Excel. And this one with the table icon means that is the defined table that we have defined. So your tab key will actually commit it for you. And what are we looking for? We are looking for costs. Right, so the costs, here we go. We have the cost here, then we close and we hit our enter key, and now we have this. So what you can do again to stop writing this over and over again is to copy this from here. Once you have it copied, all you just have to do is to give this a name. That is gonna be price or unit price. So with unit price, I'm gonna paste this over here, and it will give me the same exact thing all I need to change right now is to change the last this thing, which is what we're looking for. Double click and instead of us to return cost, we're going to take off this one and we return, I think, unit price, which is this very one here. Then hit your enter key and you can see we have the unit price returned for us. So you can see how simple it is without you coming over here or doing any cell reference when you use the name range to get this done. Right, so the name range is very simple. All you just have to do is to make sure you highlight the color, the table you want, and go over here, go to formulas, and you click over define name. And if you want to manage it, you can click over here. Those are all the names you have actually, you know, defined. When I click over here now, it highlights this specific column for me. So click over here and do this. Can you see it? So just cancel or close. All right, let us go to the next one. The next thing right now is that we want to actually get some kind of uh, age group. Before we can get the age group, we need to get what we call age of customers, right? So let me let you know one thing first. All right, if you look at here now, we have this particular date of birth. That's gonna be date of birth for our customers, right? Then we have this particular transaction date, which is the date in which those particular customers made their transaction. So if you want to find out their age right now, remember we have this particular function inside either Power BI or Microsoft Excel. And what this function stands for is giving you today's date, like the current the current date is what is going to actually return to you, right? 
So the mistake most people always make is that they don't know which one to use to calculate the age of a particular you know, person. And there are some situations whereby you need to use today to retrieve the age if you are looking forward to get the current age of that particular person based on the specific day you actually calculating it. But if what you're looking for is to know the age of the customer on the day this particular customer made a purchase, then you are going to do it between the date of birth and the transaction date. This is one thing you need to understand before we start creating. So let me show you the example of the two you know, in action. So over here, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to say just age. So with this particular age here, we have a specific function that can actually help us to do this. And that function is actually called the date div. So with your equal sign here, date div. So just go ahead and actually open it up, right? So once you have this up, the first date you want to give to it is actually the uh, date of the customers, right? So remember, we have two dates here. So we're going to give it this very one. So look at this particular place, the uh, formula bar here. Then the next thing you put a comma and the second date will be this. So which means we want to find the difference between this particular date and this date. So what difference are we looking for? So if I put my comma again now, uh, we don't have the support of the IntelliSense on this particular function. I don't know why Microsoft did it like that, but just need to know that you can actually retrieve this month and year. So to retrieve the year, you put Y and you close this and you hit your enter key. So you can see we now have this right here. So we have done this now with the transaction date and it returned this for us. So if I go ahead and double click right now, so this particular first part here is the birthday. We are finding what is the, num the total number of years this person had spent on that. So if what you're looking for is the month, double click and over here, you can put in M for month and you see we have more numbers. If I double click again and put D for days, so you can see we have more numbers. But what we're looking for is to get the age. So using the Y is something very important. Now, can you see it? It's beautiful. Okay, we did this with the transactional uh, date. So what if I just go ahead and say, okay, uh, date diff and I do this and I quickly go down to where I have my transaction date, uh, sorry, my date of birth into and I do this by today function I just spoke about recently and uh, put a comma again and we return the Y and we close, close this and hit our enter key. Oh no, what did I do? I think I flub it somewhere. Date, date diff, date diff, what happened? Okay, we can do that again. So it's not actually double F, that was where we actually made a mistake. So date diff without double F is just one single F. So we go ahead and have this closed and we quickly come over to this particular part and select this very one, comma, and we type in today look at this particular part here today and we close it today and we put a comma here we put y and we close this and we hit our enter key now we have this can you spot any difference now there are there are difference now so this one is actually 69 and 69 if we go over here so you can see this person is actually you know uh 90 1954 and to 2024 20, here that gives us the number right then if we go back now you can see this person is actually 43 years old based on the day this person made the purchase he was or she or he was 43 and now this person is 44 based on the current date we're actually calculating this on right now so you might be doing this after two three four five years of uploading this video on YouTube, you would have different numbers from what I have right now if you choose to use today's function as well. So I just want to give you the ideal way of doing this. If you're trying to look at the person's age as of the time the person purchased that particular product, so do use the transactional date. But if what you're looking for is actually getting it done by getting the current age of that particular person at that particular day you are calculating, then using today's function will be very dynamic because this very today's function would actually keep updating every single day, right? But we don't actually need this right here. We can go ahead and just 
delete this. Okay, now that we have gotten this now, the next thing we have to do is to make sure we prepare this data by creating the calculated column again, which is age group. So how do we create the age group is very simple. So to create the age group right now, what we can actually use is a function called flow. You can use the if function to actually get it done as well if you want, but I think I'm gonna use a very simple function for this. So let's do this. So equals, so I think your version should be, I think maybe minimum of 2019 to have this kind of function. Otherwise you can use the if function to do it, which I'm gonna show you how to actually get it done as well. So over here, I'm gonna type in this and I'm going to reference this particular column called age here, right? So once I've done this, I'm going to actually, the significance should be 15. I am going to explain this, don't worry. So once I've done this, I'm going to close and do a concatenator like this and this, right? So once this is done, the next thing I have to do right now is to actually do the flow again function and reference this very one, the age. Then we do the same thing we have done before, comma, and we have our 15 here. You get it right now. So once we have done this, the next thing we're going to do right now is to get this closed and do plus 14. Then we go ahead and close this and hit on enter key. Uh, I think we missed something here, let's see. Oh, we don't have to close this. So remove this closed one. Just 14. Okay, now we have gotten this grouped. So let me quickly show you what we have done and how we arrived at this particular number we have right here. If I click on the drop down right now, can I see our uh, 15? Okay, I think we are missing something. We don't have the sip the dash between them so over here in between here we're gonna put a dash so that is it so now you can see doing this right now so 15 to 29 30 to 44 45 to 59 and all of that so you define the range you want so let us quickly see how this works Okay, if we now look at this particular function we have right here called flow right now, what it does is to actually, you know, round a number down to the nearest multiple of specified number like that of 15 we actually specified, right? So after doing that, it's going to actually add whatever number we specified as well. So we specified plus 14, you understand? That is what it is. So this particular age is the column we have actually used. And here is how we concatenate the dash we have inside it to it, right? So 15 is always our starting point. You can choose to actually use any number you like. It depends on the interval you want to actually get. So let us calculate this particular number. Here we have 15 and uh, we are gonna have plus you know, 14. If we now go back, to here now. So 15 plus 14 will give us 29. Then our starting point is 15, 29. Then plus 14 again, we keep on having this. It might look a little bit technical. All you have to do is to make sure you just, you know, sit down and look at how it works. So if you don't want to actually use this method to actually get it done, there is always another alternative. If you want to use the if alternative to get this done without going through this particular route, it's just for you to get something like this done. So it's gonna be if this particular number is actually, you know, less than 15, then give me zero to 14 and all of that. So if you look at it right now, this is what we have right here. We still have the same exact thing. If I drop down now, you can see what we have here is just something like this, as simple as this, but I'm gonna go with the first one. So just go ahead and delete this one from here. That is all. Okay, we have gotten this right now. The next thing we have to do is to make sure we actually, you know, do calculate our revenue, our profit, and our cost of goods sold, which is very simple. So first of all, we go with the revenue first. So revenue is very simple. Just go and say this particular numbers, which is this particular cost here. Let's not, not cost rather. I'm gonna go over here. 
Now we have the quantity purchased right here. Please look at the formula bell. So we want to multiply that by the total, you know, profit here. And this will give us our revenue. You can see it's as simple as this to give us our revenue. Then if we want to calculate for the cost, all we have to do is for you to actually just copy this away from here and actually right go over here and it gives you the same thing right don't worry about it so all you have to do is to double click now and move this away from here you can move this away from here or you can highlight this particular part and make sure it's looking at the costs and you have different numbers then you can actually type in cost here the next thing you have to do is just going over here now and actually get is done so this is going to be some kind of uh, profit and for the profit to happen you have to subtract the revenue from what from the cost then you hit your enter key oh here it should be cost of goods sold to be cost of goods sold here we go so if you look at it now this is what we have right okay if you look at here we have this particular price and over here, if I get a drop down, you can see the minimum price of our products or our brands is actually $5. So if I scroll down, we have the maximum here. So if you want to actually format this, all you have to do is just to actually go ahead and highlight this particular environment and format whatever is actually, you know, number that is going to express in currency. So you choose the currency type number formatting you want. So let's go with just this and this is it. So we have some kind of this decimal places. You can do control one again and actually take it out from here. Then here we go. All right, we have this right. So we want to actually do some kind of price range now. So which means categorizing this into expensive and less expensive, which is something very simple. All we have to do is just to write the function that will help us to do that. So already we have the price column here. We can actually come over here and say if this particular price here is less than or equal to 10. So why do we use the equal sign? Because we want this particular kind of condition to stop when the number evaluate from 0, 1, 2, 3 down to 10. Then it will continue the new one. Then what we want it to be less expensive. So those will be less expensive product price. Otherwise, we just want to use this one to be expensive. Then we just go ahead and close and hit our enter key. This is how we have gotten this. To verify if this is true, just come over here and let's go with the less expensive. We click on OK. And over here, this is the age group. Sorry, not the age group, rather. It's going to be the price. The price is from five to nine because five is the minimum and nine is the maximum under this particular part right here. OK, here we go. We have it to verify this one. Just go ahead and click. And here we go. So you can see anything from 11 to 45 is expensive you know, brands or products. So that is the price range we have actually calculated right here for we to know our expensive product and less expensive product, right? Moving on, if we go right here now, you can see we have the uh, buyer first name and the last name. All we have to do is to have one single column that combine the two of these particular columns together. There are several ways to do this. I'm going to show you one of my best ways to get it done. And in case you don't have that function available inside your Excel, I'll show you an alternative. So let's do it. So we need to actually add under calculate that column here again. So here we go. We're going to say full full name. So with the full name here, all we do is just to say, OK, we want to use text join. So text join, the reason why I love it is just because you can define the delimiter just once and add as many text as you want and the concatenation will happen. Right. So to define this particular, you know, delimiter, you actually open this and you give a space you have it closed, you put a comma and it will be asking you to like, do you want to ignore the empty rows? Yes, of course, you can put that comma right there. And now you can see it has switched to text one. It has text one, two, three, and as many as you can add. So let's just add our first text right here. That will be the first name. Then just put a comma. 
then the last name, right? So if I go ahead and hit my enter key right now, I already have it combined for me. This is as easy as whatever I think of, right? Okay, so let's say you don't have this function inside your Excel. This is what you can do. You can just go ahead and reference this. Then instead of putting a comma right here, the ampersand and this, you reference this again, you hit the enter key and it will give you the exact the same thing I have right here. Or you can use this function called concat or concatenate, either of them can be used. This one or this very first one here. You see that? So let me just go ahead and have, um, have this truncated. I don't need it. Just for me to show you that you can do all the other one. Okay, now we have this right here. Very importantly, the next thing we want to have right now is that we cannot actually create weekdays and week type inside, um, you know, Excel pivot table. So we can actually create it right here. So let's see how we can actually create weekday. So to create the weekday here now, all you have to do is to actually use the weekday number. So weekday, so with the weekday here, we can go ahead and actually reference the transaction date. And once I hit my enter key, it's going to give me something like this. That was because I have actually used a format right here before. Don't worry if you have something like this as well. So all you have to do right now is to go ahead and do this. Then let's go to custom. We're under custom right now. Under custom here, we can do DD. And here we have it. If I click on this now, you have something like this. Can you see? So if you want the full weekday name, you can actually add under one. And once you do this now, you're going to have something like this. But we don't want something like this. We can just go ahead and take off one of them. So we just have three. Then this is what we have. Okay, how do we identify weekend and weekdays from here? So I'm going to say week type. So for the week type now, so we have to use the same function. So the same weekday function because there is no function for week type. So weekday function. So when we use the same weekday function, we can just go over here and reference this very importantly. So after doing that, you can actually come over here and put a comma. See it now? So choose the second one. Then once you have done that, you go ahead and click on OK right here. Don't worry about this as well. I've told you. So if you look at Monday now, Monday is one. So Sunday is actually seven, right? So let me just let you see it better. Go to here and just use this and remove it. So here we go. So Saturday here is actually seven. This is what you have. So the question is this, how do you actually convert this into either weekday or weekend, right? Okay, to convert this into a weekend and weekday right now, we can just double click and do it right here. We don't have to create a new column for it. Otherwise, we can just create a new column. But why should we have more columns when we can do it inside one single column? So over here now, I'm going to use the if function around this. I'm going to say if this particular evaluation, evaluate like, okay, is some kind of um, equals, okay, less than or equal to five. That means if it happens, that means is some kind of weekday. Otherwise, is weekend. So we go ahead and close and hit our enter key. So now we have this. So we now have our weekend and weekday. So can you see? We have the weekend and as well we have the weekday right here. To, so to see the weekend now, weekend, just to select this one. And here we go. Everything we have here has to do with Saturday and Sunday. So now here is one and seven. So here we go. If I go for weekday now, then we do this. So you can see two, three, four, five, six. So that is it. So all we have to do is just to make sure we clear everything away from here. We have just gotten this created and this is what it is that we need. Now it is time to get into the right business, which is great in something that you're seeing on your screen. So what do we do for the first time? We need to actually get our background ready for it. 
Over here, I'm going to actually insert a new sheet and I'm going to call this sheet dashboard. I have this. So go over to view and make sure you actually hide the header, the grid line and the formula bar. So for the formula bar, we're going to be bringing it on and off. So just make sure you have something like this. So after you might have done this, the next thing you have to do is to make sure you go back to the top ribbon and click on home. But before you do this, make sure you control A to highlight every single sales inside your worksheet. Now go back here and click on this particular fill color. Then we're going to select this one. So we have this, right? Next again is for you to go to insert and uh, click on illustrations. Then you click on shapes. We now click over to this particular rectangle. So for the rectangle, I'm going to drag it this way. And then I just want to set the height for you to get the same height I have. That will tell you what to do next. So for the height here, I want to use 1.9. Two. This is what I want. So for this very one, just take it to this end. Make sure it covers to this level and this way. Do you get it right now? This is the first thing you need to do very importantly. So after I might have done this, the next thing now is for we to talk about color. So what color do we want to actually use for our project? So to talk about color, we can actually use a website that will guide us through the color choice we should actually use. We are right here on color.adobe.com. So just go ahead and click on explore. So when you click on explore, you can see over here, there are several colors you can actually use at default, but we don't want to use the default one here. Instead, we can actually make a search of colors we feel like we want to use. So if you're actually doing this for a client or for your office or for your boss, you can actually pick a color from the logo you have, and that would definitely make a lot of sense. So over here, let's say we wanted to use something like uh, purple. So if you don't have any idea what other colors should go with purple, just go ahead and hit the enter key and let us give this particular website the chance to do that for us. Can you see it right now? So we can scroll down and we see several colors that can go along with purple. Okay, let's say we have an idea of which color should go with it. Let's go with blue. So like this. Now we can see other colors that could go with this. For example, if I click on this very one now, this is what I have. Just go ahead and cancel out this and you can just, you know, explore different colors that you have right here to be used. I already have the colors I want to use. I just want to show you where to get ideas from when you are stuck somewhere. Okay, we're right here. Oh, sorry, I forgot to show you something. Once you have actually gotten this, the next thing you have to do is to just do copy and it will copy the hex code you have right here for you. And to those of you who are not using um, Excel from 2019, you might not have that hex code, but don't worry, let me show you what to do. So over here now, so over here, make sure you select what you really want to actually give that color to and uh, go over to this field and click on this particular part, the more colors, then we can actually use this for our hex code. If you don't have the hex code, you know, you can actually use the RGB. So for this one, I'm going to use 92. Then go to the green. I'm going to use 57. Then finally, for the blue, I want to use 194. So now you can see it will generate a new hex code here for you. Then if I click on it, I can actually have something like this. Okay, this is the first thing I have here. Go over to this particular part, click on this and uh, here and click on shapes. Let's look for something very unique. I will go with this one here, drag it down. There, this is it. You can actually change the coveness, how the coveness looks. Here we go, something like this. So if you want to change it right now, you can come over here. Then you go to this particular rotate and you rotate this like this. Can you see it now? So let me show you the height I'm using. So for the height here, I think I'm going to go with 28. Point zero 
oh 28 i think 2.08 uh, let's see 2.08 will be fine then we bring this over here okay we want to make sure this one is hidden in here and we just bring this over to this level right so you can decide to play around with this one and see how much rounded part of it you really want or you can bring it down a little bit yeah something like this so for this very one here i just want to use a white background which is this like this but if you look at it it has some kind of outline so just go ahead and hold your control key to select both of them then you go to line here and all you have to do is to remove the line from here and you have something like this okay this is great so next again is for we to have some couple of cards that we want to have for our dashboard for something very important so let's go over to here insert and uh, illustrations then we'll click on this so we pick this particular one that has rounded corner on it you actually drag it down so we might not be using the same screen size so you can actually do what fits the screen you have but just follow along and just make a little change that will definitely help you so going over to the top here now i want to come here and uh, the height here should be 2.4 2.4 then I want to do that by the weight should be 5.6s. Okay, we want something like this. So if you look at it, it has rounded corner. If you want to reduce it, just click on this particular color here and just make a little reduction, right? So the next thing I'm going to do now is to do Ctrl-1 and uh, take off this outline. I want to put it on white. So can you see it now? So with this here, I can keep it somewhere around here. So there should be a white space here. A white space doesn't mean pure white. A white space means the space before a particular chart or before a particular you know shape that you have, right? Or card. So I'm going to keep that white space, right? So once I have this here, I can duplicate this very one. So once I have it duplicated, Control-1 again, I'm going to come over here and pick up this very color. So this time around, I want to choose a different variation of this color. To do that is not something very hard. Go over to more colors and over here you can play around with what you have. Can you see? You change this. So now you have this, right? So once I have gotten this, I can just make this smaller and bring it over to this area here. So send this to back. Send this to back. If I release it, I should have something like this. So Ctrl Z, what I want is not to actually have this to show up, right? So can you see it now? So now send this to back again. Okay, we now have something like this. If I Ctrl Z now, I can just use my arrow pointing to the left hand corner and shift it a little bit. This is what I have. So now we send this to back finally. I think that is all we want. Okay, fine. Hold your control key to select both of them. Right click and click on group. Then you have gotten it grouped. Then you have something like this. Okay, we want this card into five places. So all I'm going to do is to control D and bring this over here. Control D again, D and the final one should be right here. So what we can do now is for me to actually keep this right here and make sure I maintain the white space at this particular edge and as well at the top. Then I'm going to hold my control key down to select all of them. Then go over to the top ribbon. Then click on this particular shape format. Then from there, go to align and distribute horizontally. Then you distribute this vertically. And uh, you can actually say go to the top. Then we have equal alignment. Can you see what I have right here right now? This is exactly what we really want to actually create. So now, before we start doing any other thing, let us actually bring the visuals that will be on top of what we have just done now right here. So to actually start calculation now, we can go over here and uh, add a new sheet. Inside this sheet, I'm going to call it analysis. one because i'm going to have two different sheets for my analysis okay once we have done that we go to our raw data here and um, 
Now we go over to insert and we set a pivot table and we tell it that we have existing you know worksheet for that just go over to this particular analysis and you click here then you click on OK. Okay, right away we have just created our first pivot table in this particular lesson, which is something very, very simple. So what do we want to actually have in this particular part? So we're going to call this one KPI. KPIs. So having this, you know, our title on top of it is something very important so that if you want to track what you have done here, it will be very easy for you. Let us give it the color and we change this one to white right we can increase it that shows up what is actually sitting right here here is my kpi so for the kpi right now we want to show the total quantity got it so quantity purchased in here then if i scroll down now we want to show the total cost of goods sold so we have it right here then show the revenue and we bring in the profit here we go the profit Okay, the last one we cannot have here now. We have to create that one ourselves. That is going to be the profit margin. You get it? So we want the profit margin. And the profit margin should be in percentage. So here I have a column here that says percentage of profit margin. So which I'm going to actually have, you know. So what I'm going to do now is to actually put my equal sign here. So open bracket and our profit here. So we want to actually divide it by our total revenue. Then we close and multiply it by 100. So if I hit my enter key, it should give us this particular number, which is 43%, right? So how do we actually convert this from decimal type of percentage to normal percentage with your control one? You can quickly do that by going to a percentage here. And here we go. We put it on zero. Okay. Um, so sorry let's delete this one first of all let us do this first yeah just make sure you format this pre-formatted this into percentage percentage here so if you want the small places you can leave that one to two to create a percentage of profit margin right now what we can do is just to control one and actually pre-format the cell into a percentage and once you have done that you put your equal sign right here you divide the total profits by what you divide it by the total revenue and once i hit my enter key i have the percentage right here so the next thing now is that i have some bunch of sum of right here to get it out control h and actually type in sum of and click on replace all and that's will give you something as clean as this. You get it right now. So this is everything we actually want to actually have right here. And this is our KPI. Now it is time for we to get this ready. So the next thing is for we to actually hold this particular part right here and control one. Then we go over to currency. We actually choose the formatting type we really want to actually have on this. So here we go. So we can come over here then use some kind of take off the extra decimal places and on this particular one right here you can use the comma separator taking off this one is very important so if you want to see just one decimal places or uh, one decimal place or you can actually take off the whole thing and just have 44 percent right here approximately all right we have this already it is time for we to actually get this ready for our dashboard so how do we actually display this inside our dashboard it is something very simple the very first thing we have to do is to go back to the dashboard here and see what it is that we need to do so over here i'm going to come here and uh, go to oh, this particular place click on here then click on the circle and hold my shift key to have a perfect circle like this so once I'm very much satiated with what I have, or oh, I mess it up. So let's go ahead and pick it up again. So hold your shift key, release your mouse before you take off your hand from your shift key. And now you have something like this. This is going to stay right here, but it's still huge. To control it again, hold down your shift key and just reduce this a little bit. We don't want something that massive. Okay. Once we have gotten this, I'm going to do control one and uh, no outline. I want to take this one and turn it into something like white, white like this, right? So once I have this on white, so I want to go ahead and duplicate this and make sure I have this on this particular color, which is this very color right here. 
and I'm gonna bring this on top of this very one and just create some kind of a design right click and send it to back send it to back and I can actually use my mouse to control how I want it to come so something like this would look a bit cool right so if I take up now I'm gonna have this particular kind of thing so what I'm gonna do right now to pick them up at the same time you can go over to home from home you go over to find and select and you pick this particular you know um, select object from here so once you have it you can select it and you right click and you click on group then it has been grouped for you so the select object is still on go ahead and click on your escape key to you know take it off so let's take this one and put this one right here just like this right so we want this into five places so i'm going to duplicate this and have this somewhere around here for the time being now so we have the five right so i can move this one over here right now so over here okay uh, i'm gonna put this one over here then select select this one select this one here select this one let's go to the top ribbon and click on here then over here i'm gonna click on align then distribute and uh, line tab can you see it right now we now have equal spacing between here and here and all of that so this is the first thing you have to do the next thing right now is to go over here and click on insert illustrations then you go over to shapes and you pick on pick up this text box and drag it down and inside here i'm going to type in quantity sold so once you are done you can just go and resize it and uh, control one then take off the outline as well as the fill color so we now have something like this the next thing i'm going to do now is just to make sure i come over here and uh, increase it by this number you can choose different font type like this one here uh, i'm going to click over to the color and have the color changed to something like this color right so once i have this now i can just make sure i some kind of move it away from there to write this part here can you see it now it is where i want to keep it so the color is still is okay i think it's okay so all you have to do next right now is to actually do ctrl d and move this over to this particular part and do ctrl d again so if it doesn't work click out and click in again and ctrl d you just have to take this over here can you see it now so you can just manually you know shift things around and make sure it's some kind of rightly you know sitting where you want it but the color is too dark i can actually you know work on it later so i'm gonna actually quickly do all of this so now i'm done i'm gonna just go over to the top ribbon here then select this and use a very calm color like this very one so the next thing is for me to go over again and uh, here align to the bottom so here we go so once you are done to actually quickly bring everything in you can actually hold your control key to select all of them at the same time can you see it now then you see this plus sign you just drag it down then you're going to drag it down like this and you release it you get it so now let's go over to view and turn on the formula bar once you have done that you click over here you click in here equals and uh, let me show you something that always happens if you don't do it rightly in case you're just getting started before we actually bring anything right here so i'm gonna do click on this one then let's go over here and uh, okay as you can see let's try it maybe that issue will happen because most of you would have that issue i want you to solve it with ease so putting my equal sign right there i'm gonna go over here and uh, pick this hit my enter key as you can see i can't bring any value in here that was because that particular get pivot data is turned on we just want to go ahead and control it so what i'm going to do is just to go ahead and get this off click back here click on the pivot table you have created so just go back click on the pivot table you've created go over here and click on pivot table analysis and over here click on options and uncheck this particular generate get pivot data i don't know why that was there but i think you just have to take it off okay once you have done that you can come over here now and some kind of go and click on this click over here 
your equal sign and you go over to this part and you get this in. Can you see it now? Very simple. So all you have to do now is that this is sitting on 11. It's very easy. So it's on 11. Oh no, I, I, I mistakenly double clicked. I can just right click and du just delete this duplicate of our data. So we are right here. This is sitting on 11 and it's sitting on D. So D, uh, D, E, F, G and H. So it's going to be very easy for you to actually get this copied. Once you've copied this right. So here you click on this. So the letter after D is E. If I hit my enter key, you can see how easy it is for you to actually get this. So this one is going to be Earth. Right. So here, G, that is G. So here is going to be my H. So you can see how easy it is, right? So for we to avoid going back over and over again, and we now have all our data right in here. So the next thing we have to do right now is to make sure this is showing up well. So I'm just going to hold, uh, I'm just going to duplicate one, for example, and bring it to where I can see it better. So here, this one goes in here. And I'm going to come over here now and select this 16. Uh, I want to go over to the top ribbon. That's already to the top here and select this now. Okay. This is cool. So we want to make sure it's calm a little bit. This is nice. Okay, fine. Then once we've done that, just double click on this format painter here and actually use it over this one, over here, over here over here and over this one right so that is good so i think this might look a little bit huge you can just hold your control key to select all of them and just take it to 15, 14. yeah this is cool okay now it's not making any damn sense because why do we have that circle that looks like a half moon that was because i want to have some kind of icons right in here. So there are several ways you can get your icons. You can get your icons from the icons that are some kind of inbuilt right here in illustration. You go to icons, but I love getting my icons from here. So I want to go ahead and select flaticon.com. So with flat icon now, you can actually get lots of uh, icons. I want to go for charts. So here we go. So you can actually select any one you want. Let's go with this one. Click over here to download it and just go with this one. Then you click here. So this will definitely download the chart into your PC and you can actually use it and even make changes to it. So once you have downloaded all your icons, the next thing you have to do is to make sure you go back and you come over here. You can actually go over here and click on insert from insert illustrations then you oh sorry yeah pictures yeah now you go to this device and you go to your download file here we go here we go we can just click on this and we have this right here so minimize it and make sure you just do it and make it a little bit smaller that can fit into what you are doing. So after that control one to control the color so go over to this particular picture then from there click on picture color, click over here and select any color of your choice. Can you see it right now? It is as simple as this. All right, as you can see, I have just, you know, added all my icons and it's making my work to look very clean right now. The next thing I'm going to do is to actually populate these cards right here. So on this particular card, you remember what I said I'm going to have right here? That will be the profitable brands, profitable locations, customers, salespersons, and as well, the age groups that are very profitable. So we just want to see it at a glance. So let's do that. So all I'm going to do now is just to make sure I copy this particular one from here. And uh, so we can move this. So we want to take off the cost of goods sold, the purchase and the revenue. And over here, I'm going to type in So, can just go ahead and have the same format for here. All 
Okay, now that we've gotten this here, the next thing we have to do right now is to start with the brand. So to get a brand in, we can come over here and uh, bring in our brand. Let's go to where we have it. So brand name in here. So we have this. So what we are looking for is just the top brand that has the highest profitability. So we can right click and go over to filter and top 10. We choose top one instead of top 10. That gives us this particular view. You have it right here. Okay, now if you look at it, something is actually wrong. Nobody can tell what is here, except if you have done this yourself. So for that, how can we control what is seen? We don't want the grand total and the row labels here is not an ideal. Let's go to the top ribbon, then click on design and over here, click on this and turn off the grand total. Then over here, we convert this to showing tabular form and we can have the brand name and the profits right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is to actually copy this and uh, paste it down here. Then quickly make changes to this. I'm going to take it off and let us go to location. So here is by location and the by location, we just want one location that is more profitable. So we do the same thing and we put one on this particular part and here we go. As you can see, we have everything completed right here. So what we need is not the figures, but just the names of either the brand, the buyers, the location, and as well the age group and all of that. So quickly, we just have to go back here now and uh, we want to go ahead and get this. So just keep it somewhere around here. So I'm going to type in here. brand so with my profitable brand i'm going to keep it somewhere around here so just stretch it a little bit right so once we have it here go to the top and uh, want to choose something like this right so you can duplicate this with ctrl d and bring this over to this particular part here all right, this is what I want. The next thing now is for me to actually hold my control key to some kind of duplicate this and have this one below here. And this is what we want. Quickly, we just have to deselect and only select one of it and make sure the one selected is well known, is brand. We can go back here and pick our brand name. Here we go. So quickly, we do for this particular location. You just rush back to this particular part right here. You pick the location name. So we have everything here now. The next thing is for we to select all that we have and go to the top ribbon and make sure we choose the right, you know, font type. Here we go. I want to put this on 14. Yeah, this is it. Right. So I just want to make sure the darkness is not that much. We want something like this. Yeah. So this is exactly what we want to be here. So the most interesting part is now we just have to actually add a particular line here for something very important. So go ahead and drag a line just like this. It's very simple. It's just what we have been doing before and keep it right here. Make sure is some kind of having a white space here and this line should stop here and stop here as well. So once we have gotten this done, the next thing we have to do right now is just to make a little design on it. So go over to insert and here we go over to shapes and um, we should look for something like this. Okay, let's go with this one, drag it down and keep it right here. Then you adjust it to fit what you really want. What it is, is okay, okay. Let's go over here and take off the outline. Then we come over here. We select this same color for it. And this is what we really want to have right here. Okay. Now that I've gotten this, the next thing we have to do right now is to get this one, duplicate it, and we move it to this end. So we come over here and see how we want to rotate it. Here, this one looks cool. So I'm going to keep this right here. All right, so we have it. This is also designed to make your dashboard look beautiful. It doesn't really add much to it. So after we have gotten this done, 
let us look at what is next. So if you look through the, um, I don't know, if you can remember what you read from the PDF, so you are to actually use, I don't know, it's not really some kind of specified. I think you have to show values and as well, absolute values and as well percentages for every single chart you create, which is very simple. Let me show you how to do it. Go over to the top ribbon and make sure you have a developer here. If you don't have your developer, right click and go to customize the ribbon, then you should actually wait for it. Once you have it, make sure you have this particular developer checked like this and click on OK. Then go over to the top again and click on it. Then inside here, you're going to have what we call option button. So click on the option button and have your first option button right here. Then for the first option button, I'm going to remove what I have inside it and make it as little as I want, just like this without any text in it, right? So once I have gotten this one, I'm going to keep it somewhere around here for the time being, then get a duplicate of it and move it somewhere around here like this, right? So I want to go for this, just control D to duplicate it. Remember everything we have you right here right now, they are very dynamic. Once we actually integrate our slicers, you'll see things will start changing. The next thing is for me to actually say, okay, uh, absolute value, make it small. Let's go ahead and reduce this. So keep it somewhere around here, then duplicate it. So here is going to be percentage. So this percentage is going to be somewhere around here. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is to make sure I aim this one, hold your control key to select it and go to the top here and click over here then locate where it says forward and say bring to front it will be front of this text right here hold your control key to aim this one and select it it's very important please do that then you come over to forward and bring to for to front then you have it so if i actually click on it nothing nothing happens on my dashboard now on clicks nothing happens but let us see the magic I'm going to actually right click here and go to this particular form control. Then I choose to use the box here, go over here and let us some kind of connect it somewhere around here. Then we can click on OK. So once we have done that, we come back over here and we type in options. Right. So for me to be able to use this anywhere without coming back here to reference it, you know, the drill. So you can actually do a name reference here. So what I'm going to do is to come over here where I have you for, I'm going to click over here. I'm going to say option button. That is all. That is the name. This name can be used anywhere in any sheet at all that you are on. So once we have gotten this now, the very first thing we want to do is to actually create our, I think let's go with the, now go ahead and actually highlight this area. So come over here and paste it down here and uh, over here, you know, what's this? You just have to say, um, revenue by age group. So revenue by age group, you just want to go ahead and use the same format for this right here. Okay. So this is revenue by age group. I'm going to take this off and select the age group here. So one beautiful thing I want to do now is this, I want to copy this again, control C to copy and paste this beneath here. Now we can take off this one. Maybe you might be thinking, what the heck is this guy doing? Why is he doing this? So there is something very important that I want to show you how to actually create. So right now this revenue by age group would have a slicer that every single time that slice is being clicked, it will highlight a part of the chart we have right here. So before we go on over here, I am going to actually say check. So 
we want to check if there is any selection from the slicer we are going to add. So let me add the slicer over here. Click on this and go over to here and right click on this and add a slicer. So we have just added a slicer right now. So we want to see if there is a selection and how do we know if there's a selection from this particular slicer? Let's find out. So I'm going to say here, so we want to do count A. So what would count A do? Count A will actually count how many items we have here. In case if we have more data, you can select beyond the current age groups you have and go ahead and cl close and hit your enter key. So we have five, right? So if there's a selection, it will reduce to one or whatever. So now what I'm going to do now is to double click on it. I'm going to use the if function right here. I'm going to say if. So with the if I'm having here, so it's going to ask the question like if there is a selection, that means it will reduce the number five we have seen. Then if the selection is less than or greater than one, then we should actually say show nothing, just blank. Otherwise, we want to show what is here. Then go ahead and close and hit the enter key. So right now it's showing nothing. What if I select something here? Can you see it right now? This is going to be used to configure our chart. So let's do it. There is nothing shown here right now. So for me to create my chart, I wouldn't create a pivot chart directly from here. Instead, I'm going to come over here now and make a reference to this particular part right here. Right? Please pay attention. This particular part is very interesting. So now we have this. I can just bring this down to have all of this here. Right? So for this very one here, we need to some kind of get in. Um, okay. Okay, over here, I want to get in. Uh, this is not profit. This is revenue. We should notice that. So I want to go ahead and bring the revenue in here. And for the second time, I just want to bring the revenue again. So once the revenue gets here, I want to actually click on this one and right click, then go over to, you know, uh, show value as percentage of grand total. Then this is what we have, right? So once we have gotten this now, we want to some kind of come over here. So for we to create our chart, we are creating our chart with eight of this. It could be the percentage or the value. Let us make a reference to the value. So drag this down right here. So I don't want to see the sum of, so I can actually go ahead and hit, hit my control H and replace all to remove the sum of for me. So here we go. Then don't bother about this one that has revenue one and two. So over here we have this. You can quickly format this if you want the back end to look pretty. So you can use the comma separator for this. It's not necessarily need to be on a particular currency number formatting. So once we have this here, the next thing I'm going to do now is to type here highlight. So there are different levels to this, but I'm going to show you everything. Just look at it. So now we have the highlight here. So when do I show this particular highlight right here? So to show this highlight right now, what I am going to do is to actually say, okay, let us click on this one. So I'm going to use the if function here. So I'm going to say if this particular one here is equal to this one. So because you're going to be copying down my F4 key, will lock this particular one down for me right so once i have done that what do i want to do i want to say if that is true i want to return what is actually here do you get it right now otherwise just give me nothing so i hit my enter key so if i just go ahead and copy down so you can see it's equal to this it's 30 to 40 so you can see it will change. So in case your mind is still telling you, what the heck is this guy going to do with this? Don't worry. It will be very clear to you very soon. Once I have gotten this now, I can now create my chart with these two first. Then go to insert, click over here, and let's go with this type of chart. Then let us get this axis off. And this one as well, we should take it off. We come over here, we take this one off. 
So now we have this. The next thing I'm going to do now is to some kind of right click and go ahead and select this particular part right here. I think here, this part here and choose to use add. So when I choose add, this particular one is the series name. So over here, you remove this totally. You select from here down to here and automatically click on OK. You have something like this, right? So what happens if I select a different one? It's going to jump to this very one here. Can you see it now? So what I'm going to do now is to double click on it and have this active. And over here, we should actually have it overlapped, not some kind of separated. So overlapped like this, we overlap it. So every single time there's a selection from here, it highlights that selection. That makes a lot of sense on our dashboard. Let me show you what I have done previously. So over here, I have a slider that's, if I click over here now, as you can see, it has cleared everything for me. So let's see view full screen. So immediately I just say, okay, I want to see cache, you know, it's some kind of filter the whole dashboard by cache payment method or payment type. And it highlights cache to see that, okay, cache is for 20, we cash made up 24.7%. And if you go by the value, it gives you 15.2 million. Can you see that now? Is what it is. So the same thing happens if I select this particular one right here, it gives me this. It highlights that particular one I've selected from the slicer and filter the whole dashboard with it for me. So let's see how we can get this customized. We are back right here. We have gotten this right, but something is not right yet. What is that? Let's find out. So, you know, we have this one here. We have not used it. So how do we now start using the one that we have right there? It's very, very important. So this one here should be a switch. And that switch would work when we have this data label on it, right? So remember the goal is to show absolute value and as well percentages. So how do we now show our percentage? If I decide to actually create here now, I'm going to create this one to say switch. So with this switch right now, if I say if this particular one here is equal to one. So because I'm going to copy down, there is no need for me to even do some kind of cell referencing because we have a name range. If it is equal to one, we want to return something from here. Otherwise return something from here for me. If I hit my enter key, this is what it is because it is equal to one is returning the absolute value. So let's go over to here now on our dashboard and try to make it on percentage. So what is going to happen if we go back? Can you see it right now? It wouldn't make any sense. We can't use this. This looks some kind of a little bit silly. All right. Which means we have to find another alternative to actually get this done. Now, it's going to be a little work, but if you pay attention, it's not something very hard. Let's do it. Okay, over here, we are going to actually use some functions. You can use if functions, you can use switch functions. If the switch function does not work on the version you have, please try to look at how you can use the if function. If you understand how the if function works, the if function will do this for you. It's very simple. So let's say the equal sign here, I'm going to say if, so if, so I want to make sure I'm seeing this one. So now this if will be like, if this norm, if this particular, um, I think is going to be option, this option button here, if it is equal to one, then we want to format this. And the format we want to have should be in some kind of short format. We don't want to show huge number because huge number here, if we make this a little bit smaller, it start looking some kind of weird. I'm going to show you later before we bring this in. So if that is the case, what I want to use right now should be switch. 
so we can do sorry i mistakenly pressed this so we can go over ahead and go to view let me deselect this one first i want you to see it on both sides so here we go so look at if this particular part right here so if it is true we want to do something and what we want to do is just to use the switch function as you can see what we have here now is two which means we're supposed to be showing percentage so to do that let us go ahead with our percentage first so i'm going to ask if it is two so change this one to two so you can pay attention to what we have right here i think this is going to be easy pay attention to this particular part so if i have my comma rise on it so what i'm going to do right now is that if it is two what i want is that i want to format this very revenue here that is on percentage into a percentage number formatting so for that i'm going to use the text function so the text function for me to format as a percentage i have to reference the column i want to format as a percentage which is this very one this row then once i have actually selected it because um we want percentage we can put a comma right here that will give you the format text how do you want to format it so to format percentage you have to do double quotes hash dot hash hash if you want two decimal places and if you want one you just keep one hash right there and you put percentage number for, uh, formatting then you close this and you have this closed this is what you just want right so if i go ahead and hit my enter key right now so i have this as a percentage if i drag this down to here you can see this is nine percent because this one is not up to five you can approximate it so it's nine percent so let's go over here and turn this into something like this and go back here you can see it's now false so the first results now we have to control what we see there so i'm going to take off this one then put a comma right here and if the result is false what we want to return that means what we have selected is absolute value we want to display this but if you look at it let me get off from here so by the time we actually take this chart now and uh, make it to look a bit smaller so that it could, it could fit in into a particular place this becomes not much readable again so it's becoming too closed right so how do we control it so we can actually show m for million b for billion you know uh t for trillion and k for thousand and just hundred without having any of those on it so how can we do this we cannot do this format on this if we have to do this this has to be some kind of formatted in a text format that shows what we want all right so let's try it so over here if you pay attention to what i'm doing here now so put a comma here and it switches you to the value is false so what do we want let us go ahead and use the switch function so switch true function so with the switch true function you put a comma right here and it's asking for the first value right so for the first value right now if our value is less than 1000 that means it's in 100 we just don't want to have something like mk or whatever so how do we do that so to get that done now to get started is for we to actually make a reference to this right here and say this one here so if it is some kind of less than 1000 right this is 1000 so put a comma right here so what we want to do right now is to actually say okay we want to use the text function as well so with the text function right here we want to format this and comma inside of all quotes hash comma hash hash zero then this and we close this do you get it right now so if we have done this that is if the result is actually within the range we have actually specified otherwise you put a comma again it takes you to the second value right so for the second value right now this is going to be a little bit different from what we have done we can actually do say okay if this particular value here is now less than um, one million so one million so what we want now is going to be using text and with the text now we're going to take this particular number here and we divide this particular number by 1000 
you get it right now by 1000 so once we have done that so we can now do the format by this open double quotes zero comma zero so don't i think zero comma zero, zero okay zero dot zero we let us use dot dot zero so if you want two different places you can add under zero again so you can now close this and have this closed then you concatenate k to it so inside it capital letter k so here we go that is for thousand right so let us do for million so for million right now we're gonna say this particular number right here if it is actually less than so the previous one we are looking at uh one million so this one now we're looking at billion so if it's less than billion one two three one two three one two three that is nine zeros right so what we want to have right now should be text again to format it so text function to format it what are we doing this one and we divide this one by what we are dividing this by million so so we divide this by million and we put our comma right here then inside the book quote zero dot zero zero and we do this then the next thing we have to do is for make sure to make sure we have this closed then we concatenate the m for million to it and that is it so if you want to extend this to billion if you have large value you can do one more for billion so what do you do for the next one if you are stopping it at this particular end what you just need to do is to say text the alternate result should be text then for the text now you select this you make a division of this one by billion so to do that now it's going to be one two three one two three one two three nine zeros then we've done that we do this so 0, 0.00 then we do uh close this very one here and finally we concatenate capital little b into it then once we have done that we have to close so can you see it right now 100 percent, it worked if i just go ahead and do this can you see so look at what we have here 11.9 million 14.7 then approximately say 14.8 because this particular 9 is above 5 so it's going to approximate 1 to this 8 and this is it so if you don't want the decimal places like 9.97 to be on it what you can do right now is let us just follow this and make sure we only have one zero here so we come over to here we just have one zero over here so we locate where we have multiple zeros and we do all this like this one now should have one zero and hit my enter key and this is what it is that we have can you see so if you still don't want this you just want to have 12 million you can do it by just having this only zero without any dot you get it right now this is what you can do to actually achieve something like this okay we have gotten this now we are doing this just once and for the rest of the charts we are just doing copying and paste recycle through what we have done so we want to actually re replace it with this one all you have to do is to go over here then come over to this and more it will open this for you select this one and now you select here so you click on okay okay fine turn off the value can you see now this make a lot of sense than the previous one we have used so the reason why we went through this route was because we are trying to use absolute value and as well percentage in one single chart and if you do just normal number formatting in a cell which is the one you know of it wouldn't work so you have to do a lot of work to have this kind of thing done so let's some kind of go ahead and control x to cut this away from here and we go to our dashboard we drop this right here so what happens if i select percentage and you can see it's expressed in percentage so and this shifts based on what has been selected this is not in news to you that something like this can be achieved any longer it's as simple as abc so 
if I deserve some kind of comments, let me know what you feel about this and just say thank you if you have nothing to say. And your like and subscription is very important so you can share this to your friends and family. So let's keep going.